Hello beautiful people, happy Sunday to you all and you're welcome to Street and Cathedral once again. Um, we're going to have a, an intellectual fellowship today and I have two, two, two amazing, amazing brothers that are going to be joining us. Uh, you're welcome big bro. Thank you very much. Good to have you here. Thank you for the privilege. Okay. Um, if you give me just two minutes, let me uh, accept the other guest so we just kick off that way. He also just said me request himself. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you for the privilege. Okay, Mr. Bright, okay. Thank you. Good evening. Yes, so just keep All right. Um, you're welcome officially to Street and Cathedral. I'm going to be doing the introduction based on punctuality, and you permit me to introduce the first person that popped up. Um, by my immediate left here is my my big bro see this man i his younger brother is actually the closest friend i have in my life and so practically i'm his younger bro and he's someone that we emulated his lifestyle while we grew up we saw his lifestyle while growing up and you know there are few people you could actually vouch for when it comes to um when they are they are living what they are preaching uh, is a deacon, uh, uh, not just a deacon. He graduated as a very, very brilliant mechanical engineer, and he has also practiced professionally in the banking sector, the IT, as an IT personnel. Also, is working. And one of the things that has been so impressive about his journey is his heart for God. He uh, is the founder, convener of um, Bethel dwellers a group of singers for 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 the lord and one of the one one of the most amazing thing i'm personally proud of him is that he's the convener of understanding the scriptures uts understanding the scriptures i i, I have to put this in the right perspective in in his introduction because you see why people are sitting and complaining about some certain things going on in society that oh these kind of programs are trying to corrupt our kids this kind of program is not good enough for the youth this, i see someone coming in with solution rather than just doing the talk complain so he's not sitting at the corner of complaints alone he's saying okay fine rather than complain this is what we can do and over the span of years i've seen uts grow and I can see that that is the finger of God. So, um, you're welcome on board, Deacon. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, by my immediate right is my very, very good friend, amazing, amazing brother. Uh, this man is a mighty man of value. We met actually when we were summoned by the president of Egypt. Um, his Excellency Abdel Fattah El Sisi, when he selected 100 brightest youth, youths across across Africa. Uh, as I then, I have, I have been, you know, close relationship with him. We've actually shared contact and we've been following each other. He's actually a graduate of first class. He has been a tutor before he left Nigeria, shows of Nigeria. And one fascinating thing about Mr. Bright is that he has a heart for God and he's not ashamed to actually pro project his stance when it comes to propelling the gospel and the faith. And I think these are the things that are reflective when the scripture says that we are the soldiers of the end time. And unashamedly, I've seen Mr. Bright actually also living that uprightly. To be honest, trust me, when we were in Egypt, we were actually there to actually reflect who we are. And Mr. Bright actually projected himself to be that man that is actually also living what he stands for. So Mr. Bright is, um, according to his most recent, most recent accolade, is an associate uh, lecturer, if I'm right. Yeah. And the University of, um, remind me that, um, University of... Uh, York St. John University, mm -hmm. Academic Associate, York St. John University. 
Okay. Uh, pardon me for that. So you're welcome, <laughs> no welcome Mr. Bright in Duka. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. And let me Thank add you. let me add a few toppings on your on your introduction before I now welcome you to my home. Uh, Mr. Bright, congratulations on your most recent <laughs> I am you know you know I'm gonna put you on this but on your most recent uh, but one day what I'm trying to say is that Mr. Bright is about to join is about to leave the bachelor woods now to join the, to join the... <laughs> wow. Wow. that's great yeah. congratulations thank you, right. thank you so much the thank you so much the lord will thank you. Good you. Man, in the amen. name of jesus amen amen, amen. 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 Thank, amen. You, thank you sir. thank you all right so before before i kick off um i said i'm going to add toppings also the reason more, the, more, the main reason why i invited both of you on this platform is because i I've been actually pondering on this topic for a while. It dropped on my mind. And I've actually been thinking about the perfect voice that can, that can actually, that I vouch for, that can actually come and do justice to this topic. And I, I, I believe both of you are the perfect voice for this topic. So let me welcome you like a proper African child when you come to my house. This is Street and Cathedral. Street and, Street and Cathedral is an initiative given to me by God. The streets there represent the voice of the people uh, because I believe that we are members of the society as well. We are not going to wait for a celebrity to come and speak on our behalf like the media has been projecting, shining cameras on the so-called celebrities. And by me using this hand, I know that you know that not all celebrities are actually people we can actually follow or can actually speak on our behalf. So we are all members of this society. We have our own voice. We can hear our voice and we can hear our opinion. And this is a platform that is actually, you know, um, um, ready for that, to project such voices. Why the cathedral there? I am a Christian. I am not ready to change anytime soon. Unashamedly, um, I've always been pitching my tents with Christianity. But that being said, the topic today is the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Sars, you would agree with me that a lot of shenanigans are going on right now that is um, alarming and confusing. Um, when I was growing up in the nomination, I, was, I grew up, I have never witnessed where they told us to come and buy, you know, some sort of stones of David, um, prosperity soap, uh, um, ember month oil, <laughs> so <laughs> when we see these things coming up uh, we want to actually be concerned about the misled i'm not i know i know i know the kind of people you are i know you're not interested in trying to you know castigate oh this i know i know the kind of person but the misled which are the, which are the flock we we know how dangerous it is for a mass of people to believe in some sort of erroneous, you know, kind of doctrine that is not biblically, uh, biblically um, stated. So now, I'm going to throw this, throw this question open to us. And I will be taking Jesus' word, verbatim, from John 14, verse 6. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, no one comments to my father except through me. But that word, Jesus personified himself as the truth. Now, my question is this, which I want both of you to jump on board. So, um, bro, one day we'll jump on board for us, then Mr. Bright will come. Is this actually an abstract theological principle or a tangible reality? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so first of all, I think we need to just pray. Precious Father, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to gather and learn at your feet. And with truth, we understand that um, the letter kill it, but the spirit make it alive. Even as we delve into this topic, the truth, which is Jesus Christ, we pray the Lord will see that the truth indeed has set us free from every bondage that we might have found ourselves. Father, we pray that, Lord, in all that we deliberate this afternoon, you will take your place, speak to us, and give us the right words that will 
touch our lives and change our life for the for the best in the name of jesus and everyone that is listening to us that one word that will touch them that they will walk with and go with and walk with mm-hmm. but i pray that lord you will speak into their hearts in the name of jesus mm-hmm. and pray that lord your presence dwell with us in jesus name we will not do this in error in the name of jesus take preeminence control thank you lord answer prayers for in jesus name we pray mm-hmm. amen Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Once again, I want to appreciate you, Street and Cathedral. I think you're doing an amazing job, and I pray that the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, just one or two things I just want to put in in the introduction. You know, it's been a very long time we've seen. Uh, yes, I worked on the bank, um, but not in IT. I worked in um, operations, then move in on, move on to corporate bank, and that's where I eventually resigned and start started uh, business. I started a uh, company and um, the Better Dollars. Okay, and also I am not the founder of Better Dollars. The Holy Spirit is the founder, and I'm just the president. So I just need to set that a record. However, I appreciate you. God bless you, sir. All right. So jumping on the question you asked, um, you said so something about abstract and tangible can you please remind yeah. me please i am the way the truth and the life yeah you see that that is an abstract theological principle or a tangible reality okay so, so taking our text from john chapter uh, chapter 8 chapter 14 verse 6 yes. i guess 14 verse 6 let's go there it says jesus christ answered i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me that in a way is tangible it's not abstract um, everything about christianity except uh, mo- many of us we've time to christianity as a religion it's rather meant to be seen as a way of life praise god of a truth um, for every lesson i I tend to maybe teach I try to break the words down so when we look at what truths actually mean truths it means the state of being true a f- fact accepted by uh, people when you say something is true and when you say something is true it means in accordance with facts and reality praise God so and we're talking about the truth shall set you free and freedom means um, um, not to be bounded not to be not to be in uh, what's called not to be in bondage praise god so and jesus christ now telling us that um, truth he is the truth and truth connecting to freedom is something we need to think about truth in any in, in a way you can say is light you know truth can be called can be is, is synonymous to knowledge and we know that when when you know something about a particular th- matter, you understand it. You have illumination. You have um, you have ideas. You have um, light in that perspective. And when the knowledge comes, you there's a veil of darkness that is taken away. So for me, it's it is not abstract because it's something that um you can relate to it it's something that um if only we can open our mind to it and accept the truth you understand which is the light which is the knowledge you understand we can assess the freedom so many people don't get to um they don't want to accept the truth and because of that they remain in bondage and darkness okay thank you thank you so much Dickin. um Okay, Roger. And over to you, Mr. Bright. So would you take that Jesus' statement that I am the way, the truth, and the life as abstract theological principle or a tangible reality? Well, um, thank you so much once again for having me here on this platform. Um, I- I'll just build on what Dickin has said, that um, that statement by Jesus is not just um, a make-believe is not just something that we are just trying to say more like a an anthem that we recite you know it is a reality it is a tangible reality that anybody who comes in contact with jesus would find the way that leads to life and on that path that leads to life you are guided by the truth which is jesus you know so it is not just something that we say more like a slogan 
it is something that embodies everything jesus is so jesus was giving us a revelation of who he is that when you come in contact with me these are three dimensions that you must experience all right you come in contact you will come on the right path all right you'll be guided by the truths and as dikina said the truth is light you know the scripture says in the book of psalm psalm 119 verse 105 it said your word is a light to my feet to and a, a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path the word there is talking about the person of jesus who is the truth all right so when we encounter that that word it's it serves as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path so the path is the way that we have we have been called into and that way leads us to the life eternal that god has actually destined for every one of us so it is a very tangible reality that every believer in christ must experience okay if we or as we go on we begin to look at okay why are some people not experiencing it why are some people actually experiencing this and that is actually the quite thing the core of this this particular session today as god will be helping us but this thing is beyond just a statement it's beyond just a slogan it is a reality a tangible reality that every believer must experience okay um Permit me, I'll, I'll be professional yeah. as much as possible. Yep. That doesn't mean that uh, my faith is compromised. I'm just being a journalist. Yeah. So now, let's say both of you, you've established the fact that this is a tangible reality, not a yeah. theological principle. Agreed. So now, people want, want to know what is the spiritual freedom in relation to the truth. The reason why I'm asking this question is because many people would say, uh, well, God only sees the hearts. It doesn't matter. He sees the heart, and they give examples, biblical examples of you know David instances, as if that is the status, the standard of God. So, uh, um, so let us now access that freedom itself, because uh, I want to believe that uh, the truth now people want to be free. That's the end point, right? The truth shall set you free. So, knowing the truth, like you said, now I, I in, in Romans, if we can open, let's open our scriptures to Romans chapter eight, verse two. I'm using a new international version, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. So according to Apostle Paul, he says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. I repeat, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Now we see freedom here again coming in play from Apostle Paul's teaching. So now the question now is, how can we assess the spiritual freedom in relation to the truth? You know, people want to assess it. How can it be assessed? Does it mean that it is just only the heart? That is the standard. Praise the Lord. Um, first of all, there's a need to believe in the truth himself. Praise God. There's a need to believe in a truth. That's, first of all, will set us free. For example, I want it to be more practical and relatable. Um, when you believe in your chair that it will not fold you down, you go ahead and sit on it. That's the evidence of your belief. And of a truth, the chair will not fold you down. But if you have someone tell you lies that, see, some of the chairs are just, some of the legs is bad. That they just managed it don't sit on that chair but which the chair is actually good but because of what he said that has affected us of we and that of as of which you know that is a false that is false and um you know false is an opposite of truth so when we say the truth set you free fall, falsehood brings into bondage the truth is light falsehood is darkness so you looking at the chair you feel like standing and sorry you feel like sitting but you cannot sit why because somebody said and you believed that the chair is bad the legs of the chair is bad so you just you don't have a choice than to keep standing you understand until when you are tired and you are you are just there praise god until somebody now tell you ah don't mind them the, the the chair they've repaired it is fine now it's okay that's when you can now okay i cannot take the belief and sit on it so first of all for you to assess the truth for you to be set free 
there is a need to believe in Jesus. Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Um, let me take it from my, from my Bible here. Romans 10 10 says, For it is with your hearts that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. Praise God. It is with our heart to believe that Jesus Christ has come to set us free. Is the one that that has that has the embodiment of truth. Is the one that can give direction. Is the one that can give light. Praise God. So one way to assess freedom is to believe in Jesus Christ, which is the truth. Secondly, we must grow into studying the scriptures. I I'm I'm very deliberate about saying reading. There is a need for this generation to study the scriptures. And when we are studying, when we are talking about studying scripture, you are not studying scripture to to um ordinarily get knowledge. You are not studying the scriptures to uh, maybe um get some theological theories or something. You are studying scriptures to know God. Praise God. You are studying scriptures to you know, when it's somebody that you love, that you want to be with, you will always yearn to hear his voice. So one way, one practical way to get close to God is to start, know what he wants and what he doesn't want. So it's with his wisdom to say, okay, um, for me to be prosperous, for me to get the principles on working with God, you understand, and allowing the truth to transform me. I need, I need to hear God. And how do I hear God? By studying the word of God. Giving ourselves to the word of God and doing accordingly to it. I want to touch on, touch on that. You can see that um, um, in Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. And also by preaching and teaching. Let's, I want us to read this part in the scriptures, that Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they shall not believe? And how then shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be saints? As it is, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things praise god so that passage has actually said it all you understand so as i've said so that i can give um, mr bright also um hard up to it there's a need to believe in the truth it's a reality it's a reality that people try to shove around like shove aside it's a reality that you have to believe in jesus and walk in his way so with that we we begin to see ourselves being liberated from the mirage of darkness or bondage. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Yeah, so Mr. Brett, um, how can we um, assess this spiritual freedom in relation to the truth? Okay, um, again, as a build up to what Dickin has said, um, that Roman, when you asked the question initially, that Romans 10 came to mind, but I'll just take it upward to verse 9. Um, uh, it says here, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, you will be set free. All right, so it is interesting how um, Apostle Paul, in writing this, actually um, brings about a relationship between the words of our mouth and also our freedom. All right, so I'll come to that point. The first stage is believing. When we believe in Christ, that's the first stage of us assessing this freedom um, that we are talking about. Then secondly, which um, we're talking about, the truth does not just set a man free. The, tr the, the truth also keeps a man free. So there are two different things. A man can be set free, but there is need for that man to be kept free. Mm. Because the devil, the devil is not, the devil is not, um, is not tired. The devil is never, the devil is, is, is a marathon um, athlete. He does not run sprints. No. It's all the scriptures say about Jesus, that after the temptation of Jesus, that he left Jesus for a while. You know that, you know, so he's, he does not give up. So more than just setting a man free, 
God designed the truth in such a way that the truth can also keep a man free if the man diligently seek for the truth. All right. So after believing in Jesus, now that you have been set free, there is need for you to diligently seek for the truth. All right. It's, it's just like a spiritual archaeologist. You're actually looking out for, you are digging. You now get to that point where you study, like Dickens said. You are not just reading, you are studying the word. All right. You are studying the word in details in order to be able to keep Keep yourself free. Scripture says in Romans 12 verse 1, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 is my area of emphasis. He said, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing. Renewing there is a present continuous tense by the renewing of your mind. So in other words, um, do not be conformed to this word, but be continually transformed by renewing your mind, exposing yourself to the truth. You are kept free. So beyond just being set free, which is um, when you come to the point of believing in Jesus, the truth also keeps a man free by which studying the word of God, getting ourselves, giving ourselves to diligent studying of the word. Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. So there is that place of seeking, going for knowledge, going for the truth, all right? Seeking the truth. And how do you buy it? Someone may ask, how do you buy the truth? I thought Jesus, uh, salvation is free and all of those. So yes, you buy the truth with your desire and your diligence, all right? So you keep going for it. You keep seeking after him. By the time we keep seeking after him, the more of him we get to know, the more the, the more enlightened we become, the more light we get, and the more we are kept on the path of freedom continually. Amen. Okay, now, uh, um, I'm going to take you on separate questions now. And this is me okay. following up on your words, if you don't mind. But before then, I think you've done justice to the word of um, a theologian, Alistair McGrath. He says, he stated, Christianity teaches that the recognition of one's sinful state and the acceptance of God's, God's grace leads to true liberation. And I think that's what both of you have said for just um, the few minutes. Now, now, now um, Dickin, this is your question and um, also you, Mr. Bright, this is your question. I want you to ponder on it before. Now, let me go with Dickin for it. Dickin, you said study. Now, it is written that study to show thyself approved. But now, I, I, I got, I had an encounter with a man of God a few years ago who told me, Dimeji, do not let your pastor read the Bible for you. Make sure you read your Bible yourself. Now, is this not, uh, what, what do you think about that statement? And, 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 and how would you emphasize on that statement? Because if we say that I study the word of God myself, do you really think, at some point in time, I do not need guidance and interpretation from other people. And what are the dangers that lie with all these things we see now? Because I keep up with what is contemporary about buying stones of David, doctrines and all. So how do people not fall trap, even when they're trying to reach out with the fact that, okay, fine, I think I need, and I think it's biblical. At some point in time, God sent Philip to go and meet an Enoch that was confused about the scripture. So by virtue of that incident alone, we can see that there are many people that are actually doing this study, as you said, Dickin, but they got to a point in time that they actually need explanation. And in some cases, they got confused because the person that is actually also explaining to them has actually given them falsehood according to what you said. What do you think about that? So why are you thinking on that, sir? Mr. Bright, I want to give you an incident of Nicodemus. Nicodemus who came quietly to Jesus Christ and told, asked, because Nicodemus is representing something in the society. According to the society standard, he was not even meant to go and meet someone like Jesus, to go and ask, you know, because he was supposed to be, you know, vast in the scriptures. So now going to meet Jesus about the scriptures is already controversial. He doesn't want to throw himself in such controversy. So he went secretly to meet Jesus and told you. And Jesus gave a sound doctrine teaching at that instance, telling him about, except you be born again. You know, now let us talk about that because many people will now start saying that, wait, we are here on hearts physically. Why do you bring something that we don't actually can see and you are saying is spirituality? So how do we make that spirituality now as a valid point standpoint that it is actually real because now i believe for one that you you would agree with me that the, it is it is a statement a valid statement in christianity that the spiritual controls the physical now this is where it has been a toss 
of common sense. You know, scientific tells you, people come in with and say, no, 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 come on. How do you tell me to drop my common sense? Logic. God created everything and he says it was good, even common sense. So how do you want me to suspend my common sense? That means you are trying to, you know, play smart on me when you tell me to drop my common sense and you are telling me to believe in something I don't see. So can you see that interplay right now? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. who wants to go first? Okay. Praise Scott. Um, first of all, you, you quoted a uh, meteorologian and um, I just want to, there's something I penned down here. Um, recognizing one's um, that's one one has a fall yeah, yeah. what has fallen short one sinful state. Yes. yeah one so sinful state. it's that is repentance that's what we call repentance accepting god's grace no, that's yes. when you now confess jesus christ as your lord and when you do that sincerely then you walk in his true light you walk in freedom and so i think that is just um exactly correct you understand okay so uh, back to the question um, the Bible makes us understand in second, no, let's take this first. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. It says, Now the Berean Jews were of, of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Are we there? I want us to do that together. Act chapter 17, verse 11. It says, Now the Berean Jews were of noble character. Let's pick that noble character more than those in Thessalonian, Thessalonica Christians. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the message, the scriptures every day. Emphasis every day. Bible says that um, in first in Joshua chapter one verse eight said, "Let this word of the Lord not depart from your mouth, but meditate therein day and night." And Psalm one verse um, verse one chapter one verse two three uh, verse six said, "Let um, let's go there." Psalm one. Someone just a minute. Yes, verse six. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay, go to verse three. Sorry. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water verse that bringeth forth. Two. Sorry, and verse two. Light, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight, and his and his right. law doth he meditate day and night. Can you see? On his law, he meditates day and night. So, um. There's a place of personal encounters, personal relationship with God. Yeah. That cannot be substituted, as your pastor has said. And the pastor has said it cannot be substituted by uh, with someone studying the scriptures for you. You understand? The Bible says that the letter kill it, but the spirit make it alive. One you can people can read the scriptures and use it to defend their wrong behaviors. Praise God. They can use it to defend their own behavior, getting different, uh, um, picking um, verses from out of contest and joining them together just to get, just to support their um, evil behavior. For example, we all know that polygamy is not right. You understand? As a Christian, and divorcing, God hates divorce. You understand? So you now see somebody telling you that, ah, uh, what happened to um, David? David had plenty of wives and all. Praise God. So there's that place of people feeling, ah, I can have something to defend myself. But if truly you need, you need to, you want the truth, you want to be set free, you, you see the scripture in the light of the Spirit. You allow the Spirit to breathe on you, breathe on the scriptures, and make it, make it alive. So whatever people might be telling you, there is a need for every Christian to study the scripture by yourself, just like the bearing Christian. And look at the benefit. They said they, after Paul teaches them, they go back to check the scripture on a daily basis to see whether what is saying 
was true or not. And look at, they said, because of um, their, their, their study on the scripture and working on the scripture on a continuous basis, God made them to have noble, more noble, not even ordinary noble, said more noble character because our life should be structured by the passage of the scriptures so that our so that we will not walk in error the bible says jesus christ says something I'll, I'll check for it and that's where i'm going to conclude he said you walk in error because you know not the scriptures just a minute yes matthew chapter 22 verse 29 Matthew chapter 22. If you are there, you can read. Matthew 22. Matthew. 29. Yeah. Yes, please. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do you do err, uh, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Do you understand that? You err. People err because they don't know the scriptures and the power therein. Uh there's a lot in God. There's a lot. I, I, I like what Mr. Bright said. He said, for you, it's one thing for you to um, know the truth and be set free. It's another thing to keep on to be set free. You understand? It, 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 you know the story in the scriptures of the one that, um, a, a guy that was delivered from, he, that God delivered evil spirit from. God was, Jesus Christ was making an illustration. Yeah, like the evil spirit was. One came back. Yeah. To, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the man that has an evil spirit. The evil spirit was sent out. Just one evil spirit was sent out, yeah. and the Bible says that he went to Harry Ridge, Harry went region, about, went all around, he went about. He did not find any apple. He came back to check where yeah. he left, and he saw it yeah. very neat, yeah. very neat. Nothing was occupying. You understand? And he yep. said, okay, that's good. He went to get more dangerous. The Bible says he went to get more dangerous spirit and they filled the man. The Bible says the end of the man was much worse than his beginning. Do you understand? So it's one thing for you to go for deliverance and be delivered. Ah, thank you. I, lo I love this message. It's wanting to stay, to be stay, to continually be, 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 be free indeed. And that's when you keep the Holy Spirit, when you follow the principles of the scriptures. And how do you get the scripture, principles? By studying daily. Praise the Lord. Now, this is where I want you to jump in, Mr. Bright. Uh, Dickin has said something, and thank God he has initiated my next question for both of you, which is the Holy Spirit. Since you have started that, my question to you is spiritual spirituality versus common sense. You know, this physical order. It has been an argument, and the common sense people are pitching tents with is not just uh, mundane thinking or a layman thinking. Scientific principles are in line with their thoughts. You know what I mean? When they, and people are trying to actually look into the fact that are you trying to tell me to suspend common sense for the sake of you saying spirituality controls the physical? And do you know that also these people have you know some things they pitch tents with to say. How could you, you say that I should suspend my common sense when there has been massive gain of, you know, cheating of people? And, you know, people have that argument a lot, a lot, and it is going on in Christianity now, if you agree with me. So what do you have to say about that spiritual, uh, spirituality? Um, people try not to delve deep into that aspect as opposed to, you know, um, the, 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 the scientific or the, let's say, the, the, the common sense as they saw, the logic, logic reasoning. Okay, um, thank you so, so much for that. Um, if you permit me, I just wanted to add something to what Dickin said about his question. If you don't, if you permit me just one minute um, about studying, um, studying their nights at the Berean Christians. Um, I also want to add that because you said something about um, they go to people to interpret the scripture. Yes, we cannot, we are not created to uh, function in isolation. We are created to be relational beings. And by that, I can discuss scripture with you. I can discuss scripture with a dear brother, um, a, a, a father in the faith, a mentor. I can discuss scripture. Um, but you see, we must be guided by the spirit of God. Scripture says, um, God speaking in, Je in Jeremiah, 3 verse 15 he said i will give you shepherd after my heart it is god that the problem with a lot of people is that they are moved by a lot of things and they choose pastors themselves you know it is god that gives you your pastor 
<laughs> so when you come into a <laughs> city, one of the things I learned from my spiritual father. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you. I'm sorry. To, please repeat that statement again. Yeah. Just you, you don't just choose a pastor because you like the pastor. No, it is God that gives you a pastor. He said, I will give you shepherd after my heart. All right, shepherds are gifts. He said, um, and he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Those gifts he gave unto men are men. All right, he gave gifts unto men. So shepherds are gifts. One of the things I learned from my spiritual father is when I come into a new city, one prayer point I pray is, Lord, show me the mountain where I should worship you. Now, it, it, that, that actually stems from a Abraham, by God telling Abraham, he said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, to the mountain, where, to the place where I will show you and there you shall worship me. That's the first time that the word worship was used in the Bible. And it was God that showed him the mountain. I believe that Abraham passed through a lot of mountains on his way, but God had to show him the mountain where he must worship. The problem with a lot of us is that we go to seek after the mountain ourselves. All right, we are so tied down to denomination some of us will say oh i'm an anglican i'm a methodist when i go to a city i must attend methodist and you go there the shepherd there is not the shepherd meant for you it could be the shepherd meant for another person but not meant for you all right so i just want to add that that we must trust god to give us shepherd after his own heart is a gift from god to us and that's where we can never go astray he said he leads me beside still what i you know um um psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want all right um um um, he leads me beside the water. He made me to lie down in green pastures. It is God that makes you to lie down in green pastures. He knows where the pastures is. So we must trust God to give us shepherd. You can't listen to everybody. You can't listen to every man of God. That being said, let me go back to my question um, about the place of spirituality and common sense. The truth is, um, man actually was created by God and man was created by God to be an intelligent being. All right, to be an intelligent being that has a will, that has a soul. All right, a, a man, man was created by God not to be to be a replica of himself. All right, God is an intelligent God. God is a creative God. All right, and God created man to also be intelligent as himself. But the problem is during the fall of man, there was actually a there was actually um a pollution. Of the intelligence that man now has that makes man to feel that man can actually do without god all right so and one thing about god is scripture says the gifts are of god are without word that, that yeah. god has given man that stuff he has given he has endowed man so even after the fall the fallen man still has those intelligence those high level creativity and that's why you see the very witty inventions that we see today in our world all right because those things stems from the the, the god himself god is a creative god and so the man that comes out of god is also a creative man and that's why you see very witty inventions. You go to places like Saudi Arabia, you see mighty, magnificent building. You are asking, is he man that created this? You know, like when we when we visited Egypt, you know, I was asking myself, how were they able to, without technology in those days, how were they able to put together those pyramids? Again, that tells you the level of creativity that, um, that is embodied in man. And that thing stems from God. But this is where the devil actually has lied to us. The devil has lied to us that we can actually do without God. All right? The devil has lied to us. And this is not in our generation. It has been from the time, from time in memoria. Um, when, when, when they were building the Tower of Babel, and they said, let us build. Who gave them that creativity? Who gave them that ability? It was God. But they feel they can rely on their common sense to do what they feel they can do by negating the spiritual aspect, by negating God, by sidelining God. And God had to make them understand that, see, I am the one in charge here, regardless of whatsoever that you have. So, Again, what am I trying to say? Logic is good, but logic can never supersede the wisdom of God, which is spiritual. Okay? And we must embrace, we must appreciate that spiritual aspect. The devil has so much infiltrates the, 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 the idea of man, and we see ourselves like we can... Now, what, what's, what are the things that we are looking at now? Artificial intelligence cloning all of those things those things are stemming from logic they are stemming from reasoning they are stemming from um, um the intelligence of man but they are actually most people are actually doing that in 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 opposition to the supreme being that actually made man who is god so but we we must must come to that point of telling ourselves the truth that at best, what man can actually do at best is that man can get to that point where man knows that. And and the COVID nineteen actually was COVID nineteen was actually a very good like a wake up. outplay. Oh. 
yes the wake up call to us that no matter how intelligent you are a man all right there is this there is still a supreme being somewhere that that is higher than your intelligence uh, but 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 you know the devil keeps the devil is the father of all liars the devil keeps lying to man that see you are you are you are intelligent you can be like god and that was that was what started from the beginning he said you 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 eat the fruit you become like god whereas you are already like god and your essence your reality stems from god we cannot we cannot operate in sound logic we cannot operate in sound reasoning outside of god outside the spiritual aspect i'm going to read a very a very interesting scripture job chapter 32 verse 8 elihu was speaking one of the friends of job in job 32 verse 8 he said um now let me just give a a um a background to this before yeah. now he was telling elihu among the three friends of job elihu is the youngest Okay, Eli is the youngest among the three friends. And so far, the other older ones have been speaking and speaking and speaking. And this young man was just silent. But at some point, he needed to say something. And he said, in, from verse 7, um, let me read from verse 7. He said, from verse 7, he said, I thought age should speak and advanced years should teach wisdom. In other words, I was thinking, you know, we always say that wisdom comes by experience. Wisdom comes by age. It was like, I thought those who are older should speak for wisdom comes with age. He said, but, in verse 8, he said, but, it is the, there is a spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty, that giveth him intelligence, that giveth him understanding. So, no matter how we try to see that man is an intelligent being yes but you see the essence of that intelligence is rooted in the divine being the creative god that made man and anytime we try to deviate from that we'll find ourselves in error anytime we try to deviate from that we we'll find ourselves getting into and that was what nicodemus actually understood that there's something about this man yes i'm a sound teacher i mean i'm an intelligent man i know i know the the, the torah i know the bible you know but there's something about this man all right and because of the pride because of the people around and the status in the society you have to come by now he says see forget all of those things that we think that we know there is something in you that i am that i have come to terms with please can you can you give me that thing and that was why he came all right so he came to that point of understanding that no matter how intelligent we think we are no matter how vast science may think they, they are logic may think they are there is something in god that man still lack and man is still searching for and that's why they always say that man's needs are insatiable it can only be satisfied in god amen mm. thank you very much and that was um that i appreciate both of you you both of you have really dropped very very powerful powerful submission and uh, I, I believe this this will resonate with many many millions of people and thousands of people that will listen to this uh, uh before we go i just want to make a comment on your your, your this um Thing you said so far in my forthcoming book um which I'm, I'm going to be releasing next month the evils of immortals uh there's a chapter there which is my favorite chapter and it's it's, it's called science mm. i tried as much as possible to discuss about these spirituality spiritual laws versus common sense and law then i asked the question it's just it's just a question i said okay fine we respect to all scientists i respect you you guys are intelligent but don't you find it funny that we find ourselves in a pla on a planet we are settled we are not scared of going into extinctions nothing is actually uh, after our lives and all and we now started asking ourselves where did we come from we now started devising knowledge of discovering who we are and you call that superior knowledge it's is it not tricky to us mm. it, it, it's tricky because whoever put us here is way ahead of us so we are discovering now oh there we found another galaxy oh there are more planets oh there are this and we are settled and we are finding out that oh this there are other planets that if we had been on those planets we would have died life cannot survive there so whoever put us on this planet was purposed to we didn't just land there it's, it's, it's so funny that even all knowledge and i asked one time i said okay fine if you won't agree with that can you through science tell me the purpose of life i'm yet to see one person explain that to me just explain to me the, the reason why we are all here the purpose of life and i think that, that's where people now start trying to okay let's make sense out of spirituality but that's that being said that that's from my book evils of immortals that's coming up now i i i i i love i love also what dickin has said also when it comes to studying because truth be told if we don't study on ourselves, by ourselves, 
and Holy Spirit actually also is a teacher because it is written that I, I'm going to send you and help me right and helper a comforter so one of those things holy spirit will actually be telling us is supposed to be our best friend our confidant someone we talk to holy spirit will guide us on our path and one of those things is if you make holy spirit your friend and you are reading what does the holy spirit do it teaches you tell you do you understand what you're reading so rather than god now sending philip to that enoch we have holy spirit right yeah. now leading us on you know what we illuminate our knowledge and 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 that so I, I, that's just my own buttress on that now i'm going to lead to this last question before i always ask a final question and i will call it a wrap because we have barely eight minutes more. and this is the last question for both of you and it comes with the responsibility as a christian in these recent times uh, there have been a lot of talks around the fact that so is christianity just all about we sheepishly just you know there are a lot of social activities going on social injustice in the world um taking it from the word of martin luther king the one who spearheaded the civil rights movement he said the time is always right to do what is right and we know martin luther king to be a reverend and who also lived up to his truth as you know standing and he, he lived to be a christian that's the ethical implication of being christian so in recent times we start seeing the rate of you know human rights violation poverty environmental degradation and so in 2018 the world council of churches 2018 the world council of churches stated the christian commitment to the truth includes the call to justice and peace among all people now people's argument now falls on the fact that Christianity seems to be more like passive when social injustice are going on. When people are suffering in the hands of oppressors, you know, corrupt people, then they expect that, oh, maybe some Christian figures should have heard their voice and pitched their tents with people. Some people also pitch tents that Christianity welcomes all the thieves, the poor, the rich. So these arguments, that you see that's that's why i said it's my final question this argument is ongoing it's what you can you know people have been pointed out to also some big men of god not that they are actually questioning their character they're actually questioning where they preach their tent to when all these things are going on obvious you know when people are poor poverty uh corruption going on and all so this argument has been going on and that's why i pitched that with christianity responsibility in social hemisphere you get in this social so what do you think in that line what uh, what 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 is that responsibility as a christian in the society in order to actually uh amidst you know amidst social injustices and um all these like poverty that goes on and environmental degradation name it human rights violations and all what do you think uh, when people now pinpoint someone like martin luther king and other christians in relation to recent christian the tag as oh they are just only aiming for prosperity gospel. How do we balance that, that antithesis? Dick, do you want to go in first, sir? Okay. Um, first of all, you know, the ways of the Spirit is actually different from um, the ways that the world operates. What do I mean? The world will tell you that if somebody slaps you, you have to slap your own back. Don't take nonsense. But Jesus will tell you, when they slap you one cheek, you turn the left cheek. Yeah. Praise God. And um, I want to just throw this rhetorical question. Um, according to the scriptures in Second Kings chapter 6, verse 5, I paraphrase the story. Okay, before I go ahead, yes, I, I think, um, I, 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 yeah, I believe that Mr. Bright also is working in the spirit, you know. When he quoted the scriptures, um in john chapter uh, sorry job chapter 32 verse 8 i had already put that on my on my tab so i was like oh wow i just put it on the tab and i really like you just mentioned like wow the spirit of god <laughs> is one and before i go ahead he said something he gave us a, a paraphrase a short story that brought up that statement i love it that's the way christians are meant to operate you can't just pick something out of context who is talking who was talking here who why is it talking why is it saying what why did he say what he said what did he say 
before that verse you understand so we can see that he's heliud and we could see also that he's the youngest out of the friends of Job at that time so i think that's just beautiful it's a short it's it's a just a short analogy that i believe this is the way christians are meant to operate you don't just pick one verse and start running with it try to go back home and study and it shows a life of study of the scriptures i pray the lord bless you and strengthen us all in jesus name all right so back to what i was saying will it make sense um according to second kings chapter 6 verse 5 i'll just read that capture and i'll just paraphrase what was said there second kings chapter 6 verse 5 it says but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and and he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed and the man of god said where fell it i'll stop there paraphrase the story they moved from one place they said that place is small that please elijah, elijah please can you follow us to a, to a new place they said okay you can go they said no we can we know we can go they are they are young prophets Please, we will not go until you follow. He said, okay, no problem. And he followed them. While they were trying to clear the bush, trying to set up the place, the axe head metal fell into the water river. And he went to meet Elisha. And when Elisha came, Elisha said, where did it fall? Good. They showed him. He picked up a stick and he threw the stick at that spot. And the stick went down the water, down inside the water. And the metal went against the the law of gravity and came up please can you ex explain that no Do you understand? So, so there are some things in the spirit that <clears throat> you cannot achieve except for some spiritual principles you understand the spiritual controls the physical so there are some there, there, there are some ways that people have been distracted in a way you understand so most times what changed in our society today is our focus the 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 prophets of old they are ready to let go riches to know god elisha dicky 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 please please repeat that statement again i want to make it up repeat this statement you just said again sir please the prophet okay of old. i said the pro yeah the prophet of old are ready to set, let go whatever they have they are ready, ready to let go their money whatever position they have to get to know god you understand look at the life of elisha this elisha that took over from elijah he had double portion of elijah you understand he had even his bone raised up the dead you understand when the when god told him that told elijah please i prepare somebody that's going to take over from you and all elijah when he got to elisha's side he threw his clothes on him this man is a rich man go and read go and read the scripture very well he has a big farm he has oxen working for him you know how much oxen cost you understand and he, he has like he, he has a, a, a farmland that he, he was cultivating for a whole community and he was the one in charge to let go of that and follow god is crazy and it's all something that came on him that time it's something that he has been testing he has been trusting god for so that you know when opportunity meets with preparation, they say it's success. You understand? But if it's something that he has not, he doesn't want, he never, he never, he, 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 he has never imagined, he has never loved God to that extent that he can let go anything. You understand? When Elijah threw, threw something on him, he was just like, oh God, sorry, what's the meaning of this? You understand? But he understood. Pa! And he was ready. He said he burnt his work and his tools and followed he said elijah please can i just say goodbye goodbye to my peer, my family and peer. you know what elijah said he said uh, what is it with me what is you what is the problem with you and me imagine you know, he's still trying to he's still throwing responsibility on him but, uh -huh, why are you telling me this i just threw something did i tell you anything but you understood he said okay and uh, no problem don't, don't worry let me go on. and he wants everything and next day farm he followed after elijah and it was the Bible says it was washing the hands of Elijah, a businessman, a business tycoon. You know, when you read scriptures, uh, you know that um, uh, the Bible, uh, Jesus Christ has not just come to um, just, uh, he, he has not just come to 
um, do everything for us. There is a need of responsibility which we need to do. We need to we need to focus right. The Bible says, "Seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and His righteousness, then every other thing." Most of us are focused on every other thing, mm-hmm. and that's where the distraction comes. Mm-hmm. Most you understand? Most so, are focused we, on every other thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you understand. So the focus, which as the people of old, the all the people are the all in in all of fame and all of faith, is because they focus on the right thing. They focus on something that will last eternity. They said we 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 don't look at ourselves as citizens of this world, but we look at ourselves as citizens of heaven. So they don't count everything uh coolly coolly like very very hard. Something this putting the the material things to their hearts. You understand? If God give them fine to the to the glory of God, let us use it for the expansion of God's kingdom and let us move on. You understand? But not that you will not be chasing that thing 24-7 and losing your sleep and losing your relationship with God. Praise God. As we close now, how what how can you how how can you make a sense out of this? Um somebody doing well in his profession, you have risen from the low junior staff, you have not got, you are, you are not getting to the senior um, cadre of management, and um, God told you to resign your job at the peak of your career. At the at that time, you are you are you are you, like you're just the looking at the glory. Boy. You're looking at the yeah. glory and the hope. You are the rolling yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are you are you are at this. It's easier said than done. That's why I said when you work with God, you. God puts you through some things, and, and the more you overcome some challenges, the more, the more, um, um, the more glory you you get, and the more blessing you get from God. So, I'm saying, like a life example, you are at that point that everybody, the management are looking up to you. That ah, this guy you have surpassed targets and all. And at that time, it's God. God is telling you that son, I want you to leave this job for something. I I want you to do. You understand? God has not even told you. What exactly you are meant to do, hmm. and you are sure, yes, this is God, but you are like God. Why would I leave it now? Hmm. Even when your boss comes to you and tell you that, uh, I can see that you are trying to resign, but what's the reason? You understand? And say, okay, let us negotiate this. Um, I don't know where you are going to. Can I be paying you? If it's increasing salary, I can add up so so amount to your salary so that at least. And you walk out of his office. Ah, this is a good deal. And this is a, I don't send that man to you. What I told you, that is like, how do you process that? Mm. This is something that happened to me, 2021. Praise God. And, and, and th- I thank God for your life. See, I, I have to say this. <laughs> so, the, the fact that you're a convener of U- UTS, I'm serious. Uh, me, Brawande, this is me. You know I wouldn't lie to you. I'm so proud of you. So, so proud of you. Of what God has actually done yeah. with your life. Honestly, because when I look at the rate at which the societal decadence is going, and I see UTS, it's a beam of hope. And now we can understand that God is actually navigating a lot of young minds and still trying to harvest to the right side. Uh, please continue. I'm sorry to interject. I'm just no, no, overwhelmed. No problem. God be praised. God be praised. So it was at that time um, when when he told me to that I struggled with it because. It was really tough. It was really tough. It was extremely tough. But I knew it was God. So no doubt we have I've been with God over the years. So you know when he's giving you some instruction, you know, when you when you have an exam, you know that it's taking you to the next level of your life. So I was I was sure. I was sure. It, 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 something it, we have been struggling with it since since July. And he just said the statement, he said, It's better that I'm with you, and people are seeing God in your life and glorifying God. Ah, this guy is doing well. Then when I'm not with you and you're not relevant, I said, okay, God, everywhere you go, let me go so that your relevance can be with me, your presence can be with me. Because it's the presence of God that makes a man relevant. So it's the presence of God that makes a man. The, presence, um, uh, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how the Lord anointed Jesus Christ with only goodness and power and was doing before God was with him. Is a prayer of God that makes a man raise back. So when the when when I had God, I said, okay, fine, you understand, man. Now uh, everybody's calling you from head office. Everybody's yeah, but if my presence leaves, sorry, you they will not you will not be relevant. I just okay, God, quiet. January, I then I resigned. 
my my boss said, okay, ah, this is, I said, I'm sorry, sir, I have to kneel down. See, it's something that young people have to learn. If God is telling you to leave a place, you don't live in anger. You don't live, ah, yes, I, know, I have a new hope. God has told me, yes, and begin to slander everybody and move on. No, 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 you leave. God is an orderly God. So I left like that, and by January, I didn't know what to do. I woke up January 1st, and I was like, Holy Spirit, no salary this January. He said, I'll pay your salary. I said, okay, that's fine. And I was like, okay, let me start begin to think what I can do. Okay, I have interest in farming. Okay, let me go and get a poultry and no, if a, a pigry farm. I started going to pigry farms, trying to study God's acre of land. Okay, this way I'm going to set up and all. And end of end of January, I just said it's time to start UTS, understand the scriptures. And it came, you know, when this were God, when the, when the time comes, you will you will know the revelation. How you will go about it? The push. You, 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 you will be looking at yourself. What is inspiring me? It came real. This is what you do. This is how you go about. This is it, and this is the time to go. And we started. So I will say of the truth that the 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 focus has to be properly redirected to knowing God. When you know God, nothing in this world will matter to you than God. So if that is if that is our focus as young people. Every other thing will come up. Every other thing will definitely add up because God never fails. If you fulfill, if you can do your own side of the bargain, forget. Is is my senior partner uh, and and I've been working with him for years. If you can fulfill your own uh, 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 your own side, he will definitely fulfill his own. The chapter chapter twenty eight verse one to thirteen verse, verse one to thirteen. He said, "If you can hearken diligently to my word, all these blessings shall be yours." He said, you'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be on top and on top only. Never be at the bottom. It's not that. It, 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 so, the life of a Christian, you are not expected to be below. You understand? You are not expected. He said, you'll be on top and on top only. Many, many, why many are below and they are Christians? Because they've not, they've not worked by that principle. You understand? But our God is, is not a magician, but is a miracle worker. You understand? Say, what do you have five loaves of bread, two fishes. If you say, What do you have? I have not nothing on it. You just walk away. He said, From he that think it does not have what he has will be taken from him and be given to somebody that has that has more. You understand? From he that think he doesn't have what he has, go and read the scriptures. That place taught me a lesson that every man has one thing. You might you might might ignore it, but every man has one thing because scripture, scripture cannot be broken. Say so from he that does that think he doesn't have what he has. The Bible doesn't make you say what he has. That means he has something, but he's ignorant of it. What he has will be taken from him. I'm giving to the, the person that doesn't have. So, in 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 some. Oh, right. This is not Thank you very much. Please. Oh man. That was powerful. I don't know this. Okay, let me let Mr. Bright come in and I will give my submission. Mr. Bright, please come in. Okay, um, I, I think if I, I've, I've been blessed really by what the king has said. So, um, speaking about the place of um, prosperity, right, and the place of going after God in and how prosperity has actually been um, commercialized these days. Um, the topic of prosperity has become something that um, has been so overly emphasized. The truth is, is God interested in our prosperity? Yes. Is God actually, um, is prosperity part of pa uh, salvation package? Yes. The problem is our understanding of the concept of prosperity. In our, our our understanding of concept we have limited prosperity to mean financial and material prosperity to mean financial and material gain no what god actually speaks when he speaks about prosperity much more is prosperity of your soul prosperity of your spirit and that is much more important than even the financial prosperity because there is no man who prospers in his spirit in his soul that remains stagnant physically there is no man who prospers spiritually 
who would actually remain stagnant in the physical or materially so the problem is teaching the right thing that builds the believer is, is, is about building of the soul building the believer when you build the believer build the spirit of the believer the believer is able like like we said god is a god god is there's is vast possibilities in god and as we focus on pursuing our relationship with god and we build up ourselves in god we we'll begin to tap into resources we we'll begin to tap scripture says that scripture says that blessed be god who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms so you have been blessed we have been blessed with a lot there is loads of things in god all right so it is in our relationship with god there is no man that walks with god and remains stagnant on the outside or so but the problem is we are have, we have so much commercialized the concept of prosperity and greed and selfishness has actually now made us to focus on financial prosperity and we are now pursuing after mammon rather than pursuing after god we are meant to pursue after god scripture says seek you first the kingdom of god i remember this was this and it's always a guiding scripture when i was on campus my my, my scripture in, 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 in my front like i had that just in front of me seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all right i study my i study diligently i do but if you see me engaging in the things of god on campus you think this young man do you actually study all right and it's it's obvious the academic record is obvious you cannot be stagnant wait wait, when, wait, let, wait, wait let, let, let me buttress that he came out with a first class so he's a first class student just to buttress so, so you you cannot <laughs> thank god for that to be honest because <laughs> whenever i think no, no, about I, no, it I, I'm no, like, I needed to say that why yeah because, yeah how so am i able to get can be encouraged yeah. that doing the work of yeah. god on campus does exactly. not, you know exactly you, i needed to say that yeah exactly you know most times most times even got to that point where most times my first semester break i don't go home all right we spend because first semester gradually two weeks max three weeks we spend it on campus get doing things so you you discover that when you seek first the kingdom of god all these things are there bible says even the hidden the the unbelievers they go after these things do you think you have a very wicked father that would not no be consistent with me be diligent in pursuing me all right and god will keep opening your eyes and opening your minds to things that would actually bring you to into this financial prosperity we are talking about all right but prosperity is not um third john third john verse two say something um it says no third john um yes one verse two he says that beloved he was talking about to my beloved Gaius and all he said beloved i i wish above all things i pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered so in other words what apostle paul was trying to say that the soul that your your prosperity is directly proportional to the prosperity of your soul you see i i i be said that you prosper and be in health i will prosper in all things another translation say and be in hell even so he's trying to tell us in that the, the 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 degree of your prosperity in all these things is as your soul prospered, and that is what believers must understand. As our soul, our spirit man prospers in God, there is no way we will not prosper in other things. So my goal is not to chase after other things. My goal is to stay committed in chasing after God and building up the prosperity of my soul, the prosperity of my spirit, and these things will come. I can tell you for sure. There are so many testimonies I cannot share here, but I can tell you for sure. I, I was born and brought up uh, i i would say uh, on the street of ajegunle you know so it's not as you you know, you 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 a yes i'm an age uh, boy so uh, <laughs> so wow. it's not as though you were born with a silver spoon but you see god can take you from places unlikely places and begin to order your step because you are see this prosperity will come it will you just see things falling into place you too you will not be able to explain if you can explain every move of your life then it is not god mm. For me, there are certain areas of my life I cannot explain because I keep pursuing it that after the prosperity of my soul and my spirit, and these things just begin to come of their own, begin to align. So we shouldn't emphasize, we shouldn't promote greed on the altar by emphasizing financial prosperity. No, that is the least. There is, there, is, there is the prosperity of your soul, which is much more important. Once that is settled, financial prosperity, material prosperity are just addendum that God is going to say, all these things will follow you. Amen. Wow. So wow. wow. I just want to say something. Um 
Wow, I'm blessed by what Mr. Bryce said. See, um, you can't serve God and not see evidence. Yeah. That's the truth. You know, when you serve God, it doesn't matter your background. You know, God will make your life so beautiful that it will be in contrast to your yeah. background. It will be in contrast. Look at Joseph. Joseph, a, a son of nobody, became vice um, deputy king, king vice prime, prime minister. minister. Do you understand? That is what God can do. Except if you are not seeing results over the years in your work with God, check your work with God. Something yeah. is faulty. Yeah. It is from you, not from God. Never. Do you understand? You know, I can relate with what he said. You know, there was one time when I did pretty good before I entered university then, and um, I had some friends that was work that they were working with me. They didn't know that this guy is a different guy. I, I got an encounter with the Holy Spirit when I repeated SS2. You know, that was when I can say that um, I was a child of God. I gave my life to Christ because that was the first time I would hear God speak to me at night. You know, he told me that I wanted to get your attention. I can't forget that word. I wanted to get your attention all this while, but you have been distracted. I want, to, I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to trust in me. You understand? So since that time, it has been a wonderful time. You can't hear God's voice and not, not feel happy. It's beyond... It's beyond having a friendship and a friend conversation, like having a company. It's it suits your soul. It's it gives you joy. So fast forward when I when I go to pedigree, you know, people we we chat. I have friend. I have a, a friend there that we chat almost every time, almost every time. And when exam came up, when exam when result came, I passed exceedingly, and she was like. How now? This guy, we are, we are together, together. We used to, we would this, 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 this. I said, you don't know what I do. Yeah. You understand? I put God first, and I'm committed to church. Um, I was in youth, was in youth um, fellowship in my church there. I was committed. When I take time, my few time to study this, to study my book, after I've studied the scriptures, I just ah, wait, mark for God, Holy Spirit, minister to me. As I'm opening, I'm just hearing, read this place. Take this, forget, forget, move, 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 move. This place, this place, touch this example very well. Do this, do this. And when I'm done, I'm telling you, that is what I was in the exam. Yeah. And when I just say, I just ah, God, glory be to you, and move on. These are practical things. Um, fast forward now, there was um 200 level. There was a lady. We had a we had a very tough semester that time, and. The lady, when everybody was struggling, like, okay, let's let, at least let us just make second this current. Let us just make second class um, upper. Let us three point five for this current semester. It was really tough. Everybody was struggling, like, trusting God. Like, okay, at least let me just make two one. Like, okay, day is tough. And when we check this lady, elect the let, she had five point zero, five not mm. four point five, five point zero zero. My, she, she's my friend. She's in. I think she's in Canada now. Electric electronics. I called her. We have a pet name. We have a name. We call herself Fumzi. Please come. I'll manage. Mm -hmm. I said, Ma wo, Wandi, Ma wo. This semester, everybody, everybody is coming to meet me. Is the time she served God the most? Oh mm. God, I was shocked, but I could relate. I said, God, mm. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> I need to do more. Do you understand? She said in the fellowship, they'll tell her, Sister Fumi, you, you need to do this. Sister Fumi, this one. This, we are going to um, charity business and uh, charity uh, home. We are doing this. She said she was extremely busy, extremely busy this semester. And she had 5.0. And I learned when you, are, you are, when you are lost in God's business, God, take care of your business. Do you understand? When you are lost in God's business, God takes care of your business. She finished the first class, though. Yes, sir. 5.0. When everybody was struggling, you understand? So that's to tell you that when when you are committed to God, God is committed to you. All yeah. the jaras, when you when you when you when you seek first the kingdom of God, you understand? All the jaras that everybody is chasing, you just have it and and you just be wondering. And people will be like, ah, ah, this guy, you're a star man, oh, you're a star boy, oh. you go, ah, how did you manage this? Oh God, I don't understand. I did struggle for this. You are struggling for this so when he came. It is, you understand, and that is something that um, we Christians need to focus on. We are focusing on the wrong thing. We are focusing on the completely wrong thing. We are meant to focus on God, getting to know Him more, 
And I pray the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. 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 You know why I'm laughing is because I remember a scripture when both of you were talking, you know, two scriptures, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. And he said, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. I just, you know, I started feeling that joy. When I was listening to your testimonies, these are, these are not far-fetched examples that you say you know someone. People can actually put a face to the story mm -hmm. and say, wow. And I want to appreciate both of you for sharing your story to the world. I know if it's just one soul in this recent time, Time that this story will resonate with and will change. Because what we are doing now is that we are making use of this social media platform to set the standard of God, to set the stories right. Uh, we know that we can't focus on the other side. On this side that we are right now, we do our own best. And uh, this is me personally saying I'm blessed. And I'm not actually mixing words with, I'm not exaggerating. You know, I have picked many, many things from what you've said. Some have related it with my past. Some have related with my journey. Even though my own might be so different from yours, I've been mischievous in some ways and back and forth. But I thank God also that in every stage of my life, I've always seen the hand of God. Mm. You know, I've always, I'm someone that I can evidently say that I'm one of those people God loves so much in this life. And, you know, to now see this kind of, to hear this kind of story, it's, it uplifts my spirit in a way I can't even describe. I'm serious. I'm not trying to catch you, trust me. So I just want to especially, special, and I pray that, uh, although uh, Mr. Brett, you'll be the one to give the, you know, we started with prayer, we have to end with prayer. So since Dickie started, you will end. But personally, I just want to pray for my heart, just the way I am happy that I pray that the hand of the Lord will not cease in your life. I also pray that uh, the way you've honored coming to this platform, even before you call, you've made Holy Spirit your friend. He knows your heart. He would answer you even before you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I can't thank you enough. I just pray that Holy Spirit will thank you for me. That God Himself will thank you for me. Honestly, I can't. I can't say how much I appreciate what you've done right now. Yes, it's a platform God gave me, and you see, people are also responding. People, some people have been here uh, uh, um, from beginning to the end, and I'm very sure they could they could relate well to the story. So it's not just me alone. If I'm feeling this way, I wonder how the teenage boy that will listen to this later on will feel. I wonder how that teenage girl that is almost giving up, maybe she's almost been swayed to prostitution, or one is almost been swayed to doing Yahoo, or one is almost been swayed, you know, if they could resonate with this story and say, ah, omo, ol, o, and they walk in that faith, you know, I want to specially thank you, and I pray that God would thank you for me. So thank you, thank you so much, Dikin. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. I know you guys are very, so very busy people. For, for you to you, can do out of that your busy time for this, thank you, thank you so much. Thank so, you, Mr. Okay. Pryor, um, it's over to you. And okay. before before we say the closing prayer, I also want to appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're doing a great work, and I pray the Lord continue to expand the scope in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, for every vision God has given, He gives resources. I pray the Lord will give you more resources in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And for every vision God gives, He, he shows the direction part time. He doesn't reveal mm -hmm. the whole package to you at once. I pray as you have taken this bold step to start this to influence the life of people, the Lord will uh, enlarge you and uh, rising in the name of Jesus. More vision to your to your sight mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. and you not walk in error in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. I pray that streets and cathedral, cathedral will go global in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. So for before you say prayer, sir, for everyone that might have that, that may be listening to us and you feel like, okay, how can I even connect to this truth? I just want you to just say this word after me before um, um Pastor Bright uh, wraps it up with, with, with prayer. Just say Lord Jesus. I ask, I, I believe that um, I've heard your word and um, I believe that I've all I've sinned and I've fallen short of glory. And because of that, I believe that I'm a sinner. Please have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, please come into my life 
I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Please rule and direct my life. Write my name in the book of life that I may reign with you in glory. Lord Jesus, please continue to direct my path. I want to be set free. I want because you are the way, the truth, and the life. I, I accept you into my life to, as my Lord and Savior to save me and give me total and true freedom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for I believe that you answered my prayers. For in Jesus' precious name I've prayed. Amen. If you have just done that, um, I congratulate you and I will say of it too that there is joy there is joy in heaven over your life. And please go ahead, study scriptures, get to know God more and preach to someone so that you can also be wise. The Bible says he that winning the soul is wise. So and God can pick you up at every point in time of your life every point every no matter no matter the the this, this the situation of your life currently god can pick you up so that's an encouragement for you jesus loves you thank you and god bless you thank you so much sir. thank you um thank you mr Dimeji. thank you i'm super excited about this you are doing a great job thank you so much and um, god continue to strengthen you um let us pray our gracious Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this conversation we've had. Thank you for the blessing of your word. Thank you because the entrance of your word giveth light and make it wise the simple. We ask, O oh God, that even for the word that we've heard this evening, grant us light in our hearts and lord for everyone that needs freedom in any aspect of their life we decree their freedom in the name of jesus mm -hmm. we proclaim liberty unto them in the name of jesus we pray by your spirit you continue to breathe upon your word in our hearts and lord god you continue to expound your word to us and give us insight into your word in jesus name we pray for the grace oh god to pursue after the truth the grace to desire and to desire diligently seek after the truth and your name will forever be glorified in our lives blessed be your name forevermore thank you even for this platform we pray that your hand rests upon it for speed in the name of jesus lord massive impact oh god you shall make even from this platform to the glory and praise of your name blessed be your name forevermore in jesus precious name we have prayed amen amen, amen. thank you very much thank thank you i'm going to, so I'm going to make sure i post this i would edit I'll post it on Spotify and I'll, on YouTube, and I'll send you um, the links. Right, sir. All right, thank sir. You, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is it not Dalu? <laughs> Dalu, yeah, yeah. Dalu. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Bye. You too. Bye, sir.